that Hans Isawa, to be more specific, uh, the granddaughter of uh, the great martyr that we all look forward to, Hamid Isawa. Uh, I'm joined here by our brothers and sisters and my brother Hamid and my sister Aisha on the celebration of uh, the 1st of September. Uh, and I'm glad and happy to be with you. Thank you so much, uh, Rowan. Uh, Hamid, would you like to say something? Uh, yes, sure. Hey, uh, my name is Hamid. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Hamid Karar Hamid Abi Sawate. And I'm really happy uh, to be here, uh, to be with you, to celebrate this great, amazing day. And uh, inshallah, we, we uh, celebrate this amazing day in uh, Eritrea in the upcoming years. And I'm really honored to be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hamid. Uh, moving on to you, Aisha. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Aisha Kadar Hamid Sawati. Uh, I'm very glad and honored to be joining you today. And uh, as my brother said, I hope that the next September will be in our home. And uh, happy September, everyone. It's nine. Are you ready to go or no? Um, thank you, everyone. So the way we're going to do is uh, in between the uh, three of them, they're going to have uh, they have a small speech that they prepared. Uh, we go into that and then we will go into the Q&A session. Um, I will leave this the, the room closed for until they finish with, with the speech and also with some of the questions that we've already prepared for them. And then we will ask people to come up and ask questions if they, if they have any questions that they would like to ask. Um, so I'm gonna start with Rowan and I would ask you to um, open this up for us, if that's okay. And then we will move on uh, to the next speaker. Okay, do you hear me now? On both uh, Zoom and uh, Clubhouse? Okay. First uh, of September, 1961. 60 years back there on the Mount of Adal in that small land we call home Eritrea, a great man with his patriotic companions stood and courageously fired the first bullet against occupying Ethiopia, marking the beginning of a new dawn, the dawn of our freedom and rightful independence. A man I have the honor to share his last name and humbled by that. We are gathered today on September 1st to commemorate and celebrate those who raised to sacrifice their lives for us to be free, for their children and grandchildren to live with dignity, for me and you to live in a free country. I don't think that Hamid Dris Awata Abdul Muhammad Fayed, Bayrak Nouray, Kubub Hajjaj, and the many martyrs who died on this fight would have thought that 60 years later, we'll be remembering them and celebrating this, this day online, because this is the only way to gather us being scattered all over the world like we are. On that, uh, or, or, or that their children and grandchildren would still be seeking asylum in other countries, trying to find a safe place to call home. Or that Eritrea, which they died for, would be a big prison that if you enter, there's no coming back. They wouldn't have thought that 60 years later, Eritrea wouldn't even know what freedom of speech, expression, or religion means. And that free media does not exist in Eritrea. That national service will mean indefinite military service, forced labor, and enslavement. I can't say I'm not happy about this day. I'm thrilled, proud, 
honored, appreciative that they took this unprecedented, admirable, heroic step by sparking the armed struggle. But our wounds are still bleeding because we're not free yet. As a matter of fact, it's salt on our wounds, the fact that these great people sacrificed their lives for Eritrea, and Eritrea is still suffering, losing more of her children. Our hearts break on the 1st of September because this day resembles souls that have been sacrificed in vain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to say that I'm really happy and honored to be able to celebrate this amazing day with my fellow Eritreans. Uh, the day that gave Eritreans the hope and will to be free. But it saddens me uh, that we are as free people who fought for their country's freedom are not able to celebrate this day in our homeland. And it saddens me more that after we fought our occupiers, we have to fight again almost ourselves. As a child, I always asked myself why I'm not able to live in my, my country and why is my country a dangerous place? But then I realized that I have to fight for this cause, not literally fight as our grandfathers, but work for, they, for what they have created. And this is my part as many others as Eritrean youth. We should be more engaged in this matter as well as more educated. We have a valuable resource of young minds that can be the foundation of a great development country, uh, a gold mine that is wasted. Uh, these young souls are being used by the dictator regime in many meaningless wars. The nearest one of them is the Ethiopian Ethiopian War. Our youth is being dragged uh, to be massacred for an empty cause. With our efforts, uh, this needs to stop. We who live outside have the freedom to make ourselves heard, a freedom that our brothers and sisters in Eritrea lack. Together, we can use it to, uh, to deliver their voices. It starts with us. Lastly, I would like to say again that it is a, a huge honor to be able to celebrate this great day with you. Thank you very much. As my brother and sister, I would like to congratulate you all on this great day. I think we all have that feeling a mixture of joy and sadness. We are happy and grateful that we have such a day to celebrate, but then we remember that it is being celebrated far away from where, we, where it should be. I am honored to be amongst you in the 60th memory of the success of our struggle for our freedom, for the sacrifice of my grandfather and his heroic companions a sacrifice that we, the youth of today, have to make sure that is not in vain. They did their part, they paved the way, now it's on us to walk on it and do our part. We let our enemies take advantage of our differences. We've became each other's enemies, but that is not who we are. Too many political parties that keep dividing into even more all because we can't come to terms with our differences. But there is always a way to overcome this. And a very live example of that is the Eritrean National Council for Democratic Change, a place for all the different parties to come together and focus on the important goal, which is getting us back home. Because no matter how we might, we might defer our enemy, is still the same enemy and our dream is still the same dream and as always our hope is to celebrate the 1st of September in the 
coming years at home in Eritrea. Thank you very much. So, as I previously said, my name is Aisha. Uh, I am the oldest daughter of uh, Karar Awate, the son of Hamdris Awate. Uh, I was born and raised in Syria, Damascus. I studied there. I stayed there my whole life, yeah. I studied um, in the University of Damascus, uh, information technology engineering. I specialized in uh, software engineering. Uh, I studied the whole thing, but I had three exams left to have my certificate, but then I moved to Sweden. We've got a chance because, you know, <laughs> it was war in Syria, so we, we had a chance to come to Sweden. We didn't miss it. Now I live in Sweden with my family, my father, my two sisters and brother. It's really nice to meet you. The next in line, you have to do some yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, unmute yourself then. Okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum, everybody. I am uh, Rawan Kadar Hamid Drisawate, second daughter of Kadar uh, Hamid Drisawate. Um, I was also born and raised in Syria, where I lived more, almost my whole life. Uh, and moved to Sweden uh, two years ago. In Syria, I studied uh, also in Damascus University, uh, medicine, uh, but I haven't graduated. So inshallah, I'll graduate soon. I studied five years of uh, medicine. Uh, I currently live in Sweden with my family. Uh, and yeah, I'm really glad to be with you and to celebrate with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Hamid, and uh, I am the third son of uh, Karar Awate. Uh, I was also born in Syria, uh, and uh, I was raised there. Uh, I uh, studied in mechanical engineering, uh, but I haven't finished yet. So uh, after we move to Sweden, I'm hoping to continue our uh, my studies. So yeah, and uh, it's really gl I'm really glad to be here with you and celebrate this amazing day. Thank you. For joining us today um, and uh, celebrating uh, this moment with us here. Um, my next question for the three of you is, um, sorry, just give me one second. Um, what does carrying the name Awate mean to you? So if you could go ahead, Rowan, um, and then, oh, sorry, Aisha, Rowan, and uh, Hamid. What does the carrying the name Awate mean to you? Well, of course, with no doubt, it is a very huge honor to to have this name i remember since we were kids we uh, we used to hear how great is our grandfather uh, our dad used to tell us what he did 
and uh, there were a lot of Eritreans in Syria also, and they all used to, to tell us that your father was great and your father did this. And then, uh, so this, this, this made us really proud to have this name and we did not, we did not take it lightly. Like it was a, a huge name. We did not take any offense uh, against this name. I remember us picking, picking five because someone said something like about uh, our grandfather. We're like, you know how our grandfather is? <laughs> so yeah, we were really proud about that. And of course this feeling continues till now. Till now. And then now when you grow up, the more, the, the more and more it becomes like a uh, commitment and and then you have you feel this uh, you feel you feel, you have this feeling of like you have to do something it's not just a name that you carry so you you think like how how are we gonna do this how we're we gonna how are we gonna honor this name that we have so it is an honor and then a commitment to to deserve that honor Uh, yes, uh, to be honest, uh, it's the same uh, as my sister said, there's not much uh, really to add. It is a big, big honor. Uh, we're really proud, have always been proud. Uh, it's been uh, pretty much, uh, we grew up with this, with this honor. Ever since we were kids, we've been always told, your grandfather is a great hero. Uh, and of course, uh, that grew up with us. Uh, later on, it became uh, more and more of a responsibility. People do expect a lot from us, uh, just, just merely for the name that we carry. Uh, and uh, they, they are right. We do have a big responsibility. Uh, I do feel like this responsibility has to be shared by all of us, by all Eritreans. Uh, of, course, uh, of course, our father did, our grandfather did, start the revolution, but doesn't mean that uh, it's only us who have to carry the legacy. It's a legacy that we all share, a responsibility that we all have to do. Uh, as my sister said earlier, they paved the way for us and uh, now it's our turn to walk on it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, go ahead, Hans. Uh, yeah, it's a real honor. Uh, to to have his name and uh, it's honestly may, uh, puts you in a lot of pressure because uh, it's he, he does some he did something really amazing to our country and so we do want to live up to it and honestly one doesn't know what uh, what to do after that because uh, it was such a huge thing uh, that also push, pushes me for forward to do things for my country uh, political or not political uh, and yeah it is uh, really great thank you Hamid thank you Aisha and thank you Rowan um, the next question we have is what does this day mean to you um, so if you could tell us a bit more about how, how this day makes you feel and what it means to you um, uh, like I said earlier, this 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 day always have mixed feelings, because uh, again, like uh, from when I was a kid, I always used to think that okay, now we live in Syria. When we are going to get out of Syria, we're going to move to go home to go back to Eritrea. Surely, like it was a sure thing, and then. I still, I still have this belief that one day we are going to all live in Eritrea, but then every September, you remember that we are still a little bit far from, from what we want. Um, so it is, like I said, it, it is a, a day that to remember uh, what uh, all our heroes did in that day, my grandfather and his uh, companions, but then, uh, it is also a day to 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 think about and make and pushes us to to do something that makes us close closer to our goal. Uh, 
to go back to Eritrea. So it's a mixed feeling. Uh, to me, this day really resembles a lot of uh, uh, mixed feelings, yeah, but uh, it, it's a wake-up call, uh, I feel like. It's a big, huge wake-up call uh, that really reminds me of how far away we are from, from that path that was started at that day. And the fact that it's been 60 years, 60 years ago, that's not a small number at all. Countries... Uh, countries are built in 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 uh, in such a such a number of years 60 years is not a small number and uh, to see our country to see our people still dying in scenes trying to escape uh, eritrea to be humiliated and killed by uh, whichever whichever the, the killers are whether it's uh, the regime in eritrea or uh, people people being killed in the countries that they're trying to escape to they're leaving a hell to another hell. Uh, it, it, really, it really is a, such, such a heartbreak to think uh, that these people died for this cause and we're still suffering as, as they are. Uh, I'm the, the granddaughter of Hamid Awate and, and I know many of uh, the grandchildren of many martyrs who don't really have a good life they they're still struggling we're we're still outside eritrea uh so yeah the, this day resembles like a, a really huge wake-up call uh and a reminder that we have to be doing something uh the blood that has been shed can't go uh can't go into waste Uh, yeah, uh, to me, the same thing they said. Uh, to me, it marks a beginning to a whole new era, an era of uh, fighting and sacrifice and freedom. Uh, yeah, and uh, as my sister Aisha said, they paved the road to us. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's always uh, sad to, that we don't uh, celebrate in Eritrea. We always celebrate in, uh, in, in these countries away from our land. It is uh, sad that we don't celebrate with our families, our friends, uh, but yeah, that, that makes us want to fight more, uh, want to be more engaged to, to, can, uh, to be able to go to Eritrea again. And uh, inshallah, up the upcoming years, we celebrate it in Eritrea. We have the grandchildren of uh, Hamid Idris Awata here with us. Um, we are asking them a few questions. Um, this is uh, brought to you by the Alternative Eritrea, so please follow the club. We will have more events like this in the future. Uh, right now, we are just asking uh, Rawan, Aisha, and Hamid um, about their experiences. Um, um, so if you have questions, uh, we will open the floor up in a bit. Um, and if you are not comfortable speaking, you could also send any of the mods um, some questions. Um, the next question for, for, for you guys is, how do you celebrate or commemorate the, this day um, with um, uh, being um, the grandchildren of, uh, of uh, Awate? Uh, so uh, this year uh, we didn't do anything yet, but we we are a part of uh, the Eritrean Liberation Front. Uh, last year we it was like so. Usually we would celebrate. We would be home. Just okay. It it is September. We would write something on Facebook. Uh, like remember it together. Uh, remember having this day but we, we would not do anything special. So when we uh, came here to Sweden, we were really excited that it would, we would be in a place that we would celebrate this day with a lot of Eritreans that would share the same, same country, same belief, um, same goal with us. So we did that last year. We had a, a celebration uh, of the first, 
of the 1st of September. Uh, we had a lot of people. It was really nice. It gives you this feeling of home, patriotic feeling. Uh, but yeah, but this year we didn't do it yet, but we're planning to do something soon, inshallah. So this is how we celebrate, inshallah. And every year we would celebrate it. We would make it more special. Uh, a celebration to me is more about uh, the reflection because uh, the celebration could be com more complete if we had, uh, if, we, if we were home, uh, if we were with our families, maybe with our loved ones, uh, with friends, uh, to, to just sit and reflect on it and, and, and think and uh, uh, maybe make a plan of what are we going to do about this? Uh, how are we gonna complete what they started? So this is uh, this is the celebration for me. Uh, of course, I would love to to be gathered with the, with my family with with the Eritreans, but uh, unfortunately, because of uh, how we are scattered around and because of uh, COVID, uh, there's there's really no not not much activities going on. But I think the most important doesn't always have to be about. Uh, a physical celebration it's more of a thought uh, it's more of a, an activity uh, like an activity towards Eritrea something that would uh, actually help Eritrea get to the place where our our grandfather uh, and his companions fought for whether that being uh, raising awareness uh, teaching people uh, about Eritrea making uh, Eritrean people voices heard uh, this is what the, the true celebration means to me. Uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, the same also. It's about memory uh, and uh, remembering those uh, who fought in the 1st of September. And uh, as I said, for youth, it should be about education to remember those. Uh, the names who fought this war, who started this war, and who gave us our freedom. And uh, yeah, as my sister Aisha said also, also so uh, this is uh, an amazing day to celebrate with family and friends. And uh, we hope, inshallah, that uh, we, we celebrate it with uh, our family. Thank you guys so much. Um... The next question we have for you is, how do you see the state of Eritrea 60 years later? I think you all touched on it a little bit, but if you could expand just um, on your opinions and thoughts of uh, how you see it. And is this what you think your grandfather would have envisioned for Eritrea um, um, 60 years later? Well, I don't think that now, for the time right now not six years later i don't think that this is what my grandfather and his companions thought that uh eritrea would end up being but it is what it is but i am an optimistic person <laughs> so i think that maybe in six years uh we would be all like we would realize that uh, the problem is that uh, the problem is not that we are different uh, the problem is that we uh, use this difference as a, as a, as a thing that um, divides us, not to combine us together. And uh, maybe in six years, we would be uh, all together, one hand, trying to fight our real enemy, the regime in Eritrea. We would be getting back our country, we would be starting building it everyone who's outside in Europe, America, Australia, all the foreign countries, everyone who's, who got out of Eritrea, who was born out of Eritrea, would come back to build it. So inshallah, like I said, what I'm an optimistic person, yeah. Uh, just a question, Amir, uh, you asked, uh how do I think it'll be in six years? Or what do I feel about it being 
60 years after uh, after the 1st of September, 1961. Is that what you asked? Uh, yes. So what I meant was, um, how do you feel about the conditions of Eritrea and the Eritrean people 60 years later after the first shots, after what happened to the Eritrean Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm actually really ashamed of uh, how Eritrea is now. Uh, it's almost worse than than how it was under the occupation of Ethiopia. Uh, and uh, I did touch on that saying that uh, our grandfather, our ancestors, all the Eritrean heroes who died for this cause would have never really thought that it was gonna be like this. Uh, they, of course they didn't, they, they made the first spark, but it was our uh, responsibility to carry on. Uh, I am uh, I am feeling disappointed that uh, we didn't carry on, we didn't uh, we didn't hold uh, and continue what they started. Uh, but again, I am also uh, an optimistic person. I do believe that, inshallah, with the with us being together, uh, uh, contributing into Eritrea together, uh, I guess moving uh, moving on from our differences. Uh, we will definitely, inshallah, make Eritrea the Eritrea that they uh, died for, the Eritrea that they sacrificed their life, their lives for. It's just uh, we have to communicate. We have to learn how to cooperate with each other. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think, uh, or I'm I'm sure that uh, Hamid Awati didn't want Eritrea to be this way, divided, weak and most of uh, its people are outside. Uh, this is really sad and uh, I'm really ashamed of uh, how it's become. Uh, and I hope, I really, really hope that uh, we come together to uh, and find a solution for our differences and uh, work together for, our, for a better country and a safer place. Uh, it doesn't matter which religion and what our beliefs, we must come together and help our, our each other uh, to become uh, stronger and united uh, again. Yeah. Uh, I would say that, first of all, we'd no, we don't have to to look at what tribe I, I'm from, what tribe you're from. It's just that we all have the same goal. Just look at the final goal. We all want to be back in Eritrea. We all want that regime gone. So if we focus on our goal, I think we can overcome those differences, which are mostly our tribal differences, mostly our differences that come from, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it just that too many, like I said earlier, too many political parties, like there would be a party and then it would divide to more and more and more parties. And it just, because, because they would uh, disagree on one thing and, out of a disagreement comes another party. So if we come together, sit down, discuss the goal, like not, not concentrate on the, on, the, on the things that would make us weak, which are our differences again. But yeah, that's what I think. Uh, yeah, to me, I think, uh our differences are what makes us weak. Uh, and going, 
going past our differences uh, to me is going back to where it started because when uh, my grandfather and his friends started, it wasn't, uh, there was no uh, differences. There was only Eritreans who suffered from uh, Ethiopians and, uh, and the, uh, the occupation. So uh, with power come, uh, came a little bit of differences and differences came uh, uh, more problems. So yeah, as I said, is going back to where we came from and going back to our origins as one people, as Eritreans. That's that's what I want. Uh, I would like to add that uh, I think a main reason why we're all uh, all Eritrean different different uh, tribes, religions, languages, all of that, why they're fighting is uh, it's a matter of ego. It's a matter of trying to uh to prove who's best who's uh who made the best uh choices who made the best sacrifices who has the best people who who's always better i've always be, i've always believed in competition because i think competition makes people bring the best of themselves in order to to get to some to something but in our case this is not competition I don't have to be competing against someone from my country just because we don't share the same religion. Uh, when I say, when I introduce myself, I introduce myself as an Eritrean. And I think this is what we should all be, uh, th this is the, what, the, the cover above our heads. We're all Eritreans. Every time I tell someone about Eritrea here, when I, when I, get to, when I meet new people, when I tell them that Eritrea has nine languages, they get really surprised. What kind of a country does that ha have nine languages? And it's, a, and it's a really small country. These nine languages, I find, I find, I find the, the, this uh, diversity that we have as a big positive, posit positivity. We have a lot of diversity. We have a lot of uh, cultural sides. Why don't we take these things into our advantage? Why do we have to look at them as, uh, as, a, as, a, as something that puts us down? Uh, the problem starts within ourselves. Uh, every time we meet a new person, we, we, we prejudge them because based on their religion or uh, their tribe. So to answer your question, Ismail, uh, what does uh, a country free from all these things look like? It's a country where I sit uh, next to my uh, Christian or uh, uh, whichever other uh, uh, language they have or whichever tribe it is, sit next, next to that brother or sister of mine and not look at the difference that we have. I, uh, it's a country where I and them help each other to build an, uh, a better Eritrea. Like I said, it's a country where we focus on our goal and that is we are being killed, we are dying no matter what my religion is, no matter what my language what my language is, we're all in exile. We're all not in Eritrea, we're all suffering. Our suffering is one. We all have the same goal. Let's focus on that. Let's, uh, let's build Eritrea like all other countries are built. Let's not look at our differences. Thank you. Alan, Hamid, and Aisha, just to reset the room. Welcome, everyone. Um, today we have uh, the grandchildren of uh, Hamid Idris Awati with us. Um, um, we are asking them questions about um, uh, their grandfather, their experiences, um, as well as um, anything else that anyone in the audience might have a question for. We will open the, the floor up in a bit. This event is brought to you by the Alternative Eritrea, so please follow the club. Um, I want to open the room up, sorry, the, the stage up for anyone in the moderators. So Segan, Nabil, and Ismail, if you have questions or comments, um, you can go ahead and do so right now before we can open it up to the people in the audience. Thank you for being with us. Um, it's, a, it's a great honor, uh, I think, for, for us to, to have you um, and have the spirit as well of your grandparents. Um, so I, want, I have a question for you. Uh, earlier, you mentioned that um, to, to, be the, to, to, to carry the name of, um, 
of uh, 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 it with Awate um, means that um, there's a sort of responsibility uh, that you have. Um, for, for uh, I mean, I guess my question is. Um, Either what it is that you want to do, um, either anything that you are already starting uh, or that you want to do um, because of that, uh, or thanks to that responsibility or the name that um, that you carry, either anything that um, yeah, you, you intend to do. I understand that you are studying right now, but I don't know if you have already started something, but um, what is it you, you're planning on doing? So the first thing is that uh, when you think what, what you can do for your country is either you go political or you go, you just continue building yourself so that you can build your country. So uh, that, so uh, we educate our, ourselves so that we can be a valuable members uh, of the community so that we can go then and build our country when it is free. Uh, so, uh, in order for it to be free, uh, so we can co contribute as much as we can with uh, maybe uh, like joining political parties that you think that they they can uh, do something, uh, make your voice heard, uh, uh, make your voices heard, uh, uh, so so that you can. Uh, Deliver the idea. Deliver that you are uh, you are against what is happening in your country. That you want to you want to build it. You want to do something towards it. So I think just uh, stating your opinion, uh, maybe joining some uh, a political party, and working on yourself, which is I think the most important thing, so that you can contribute in what you are good at. Uh, I would like to add something uh, as an answer to your question. Um, I do believe in uh, what Aisha said. Uh, politics is not for everyone. Uh, everyone can contribute with whatever they can, whatever we have in our hands. Education can be a very, very powerful tool if it's used in the right place. So uh, education is something that I really uh, emphasize on uh, always. Because uh, whenever we have a free, uh, it's, it's not only a matter of taking down the regime, it's also a matter of building a country. There's going to be a country that needs to be built. Uh, what, are, what are we going to do then after we don't have a, a regime that is dicta a dictator that is killing us? Uh, we, have, we, we have a country that we need to build. Uh, and in that, for, for that day, we have to prepare, uh, whether in, in all uh, in all sides, uh, in, in all specialties, I would say, uh, art, uh, literature, uh, anything, everything that need. That's why education, I believe, uh, very much in. Uh, and something else that I am really trying to get better in, and I was very limited in because of uh, because of our situation in general, living in Syria, and then. Uh, uh, moving here and only starting to to stabilize ourselves, it's uh, communication. Uh, we have to have a really good social network between each other as Eritreans. Unfortunately, I never really had the, we never really had the chance to grow up uh, and live with the, with the Eritreans that much. So that's why we feel very disconnected from Eritreans. We never really lived in in. Uh, in, a, in an Eritrean community as adults or as people who, who can understand uh, what's going on uh, around them. So to work on that, to uh, communicate with each other, socialize, learn about each other, uh, we're gonna have, find a lot of similarities uh, and inshallah, we're gonna be able to use them. So this is something that I'm working on uh, to learn about my Eritrean brothers and sisters all over the world. Uh, yeah, uh, as a child, I always said that I will go to, to Eritrea to fight just like my grandfather, but I don't think that will work now. So uh, I, I, I really think education works uh, uh, because we do need to, to build our infrastructure. 
in Eritrea, we need to have a strong base of uh, education, of uh, educated minds. Uh, yeah, uh, we need every 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 small co co contribution count. Uh, so yeah, I think education is the right way to contri uh, to contribute. Yeah. And I would like to add something more that uh, Hamid talked about it earlier, that it just adds up, adds on the importance of education, that uh, because even the regime in Eritrea knows that education is a powerful weapon, they don't even allow, uh, so the, the students in, uh, in their high school year, when they are getting to go to college, to, to do it in a normal environment. So they go do it in, in camp where they, they, they have to fight. They don't even get to continue their studies. So they, they deprive them of this, of this tool that they know they that it would come, if they get educated, they will come against the regime. So it is a powerful tool. Uh -huh. I would say so you have to look see uh, each party's goals each party's <clears throat> uh, agenda what has what do they have for goals uh, what they are planning to do what are their activities so look what look for what suits you so for me uh, it was, um, my dad was a part of, of ELF since he was uh, a student back in Syria. And uh, now when we got here, we got the opportunity to be a part of this uh, party too. And uh, so I believe what, what do they believe, what they believe. So that's why I joined it. So everyone should look. So if you wanna join a party, what do they believe in? Does it suit you? Does it serve the goal that you want to get, uh, to reach in the end and then join it? So uh, I would say that. Uh, yes, for me, it's really rare to find people who, is, who are undecided by now because we all know that uh, what happened in Eritrea have, uh, have affected everyone in Eritrea. Uh, either you're with uh, the, this, uh, this side or with that side. There, I don't think there is many people who are undecided. And uh, as Aisha said, uh, you, everyone, if, if you want to go in a political side, you need to, to study and uh, see what th this uh, political side is about and what are the goals in this uh, political side and, and then join. Yeah, and uh, that's it. Uh, I would just like to add something. It's that uh, I believe that um, everyone has to have some sort of a stand. Uh, we can't be silent, si silently agree or disagree with something. We have to take some sort of a side or or else we're not really doing anything. You are actually doing damage than we're doing, than we're being, uh, I guess, neutral. So, and I think that a person who is neutral, when they see uh, lives being taken away, when they see injustice, new, being neutral in that case is actually standing on the opposite way. We're not, we're not helping anyone by being neutral. 
So uh, uh, like uh, Aisha said, search for, for the right political, um, I guess, party. Search for the right activ the activity that suits you. If politics is not for you, then something has to be for you. So we have to search for what suits us and make a stand because those who don't have a stand uh, are actually contributing, are, are, are damaging people. So we have to have some sort of a stand. This is what I believe in. Uh, I think that if he was alive to this day, uh, we wouldn't be here because uh, he and his companions, when they, they first started fighting, uh, they, ha they had this cor courage in them. They had this motive. They wanted their home. They fought for it with all they have. And they did have it. They did get it. And uh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have let any anything to 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 take it away from them. So I don't think that we would be here. They would even be here if Jadul uh, Hamul uh, was here. So yeah, and and if he was here with this current situation, he would have done something. He would have fought with a sword, like he did. Where the tribe for oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think also the same. If uh, he were, would be alive, I think he would have been a great leader after liberation for this country, and even uh, his uh, his friends, his uh, first, uh, oh, his his first, the first warrior of this revolution. Uh, they would have been great leaders. They had a clear vision of, of the road and uh, they know exactly what they, they want to, to do. And uh, yeah, uh, I think we, we, wouldn't, we would have been in Eritrea celebrating this day right now. Uh, and yeah. yeah, that's it. I would like to add that I think if uh, Hamid Ali Sawata was alive right now, the the most thing that he would be fighting is uh, uh, our dividing uh, be, us being divided because of our differences. I think this is uh, the most important thing that he would be fighting against, and it is something that I think we should start with uh, to to move to move away from our differences as them being something to put us down rather than some something to to, to build us. Um, he has always uh, been known for uh, being, being someone who wasn't, who wasn't only, uh, what's the word? I can't find the right word. He, 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 he didn't care about tribes. Uh, he spoke uh, several languages, even though he didn't, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not only his, uh, his tribe languages. Uh, people actually thought he was from another tribe because he spoke that language very well. Uh, so uh, something to take from that is uh, he was someone who did not look at differences. And uh, one thing he would be fighting if he was alive now is differences that we have and how they put us down. Uh, thank you so much. Um, just to reset the room again. Um, welcome everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're here six years later, uh, meeting with the grandchildren of uh, Hamid Idris Awate. Um, this event is brought to you by the Alternative Eritrea. And uh, we will have similar events like this. So if you could please follow the club, um, that'd be great, thank you. Um, we just have uh, Rowan 
uh, Hamid and Aisha Awate here speaking with us um, and answering a few questions that we had. We will open up the stage in a bit. Um, Ismail, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? I wanted to uh, add uh, because when we speak about uh, Awate and the 1st of September, uh, people don't tend to understand the context as well. And it's important to have the context so that we can at least, uh, uh, you know, put this figure uh, in the right position in history. Otherwise, we're just missing out on a lot of details which might be as important as the person and the personality itself. Um, that's, that's what I wanted to, to add as a comment. Uh, and, and, and I, I believe uh, I also uh, second the, the idea that uh, Rowan said he would, uh, he would be fighting the, the, the differences that we have, which are shackling us, which are, you know, uh, we grounded because of the differences. Uh, and, and, uh, and I believe we can only uh, win over the dictatorship uh, only and, and if only uh, we overcome our differences. Um, yeah, so I just uh, wanted to add that comment.
from the books or anything else you can find. So that, in addition to everything we know about him from the, the books and everything that has been uh, shared, that shows that this was not a random shot uh, that was fired in the dark that started something this revolutionary. This was something that had a political background and alliances within the air chain community that started what uh, we call now the Eritrean Revolution for Independence. Thank you. I just want to add that. Uh, thank you. Um, I have one more question left um, for Aisha Radwan and uh, Hamid. Um, just being here today with us, what message would you want to pass on to the Eritrean people? Um, particularly the youth, um, um, what message do you feel you need to share and pass on? I would say, uh, like we earlier said, the we, like Ismail said, Ramam said, everyone talked about this uh, point, and I think it's the most important point, which is that we don't have to look at our differences. We are all Eritreans, just Eritreans. Um, so if we start from there, everyone work on themselves, uh, education, uh, and, and occupation you are uh, good at, a, a, if you are good at politic, uh, at the political side, just work on yourself, develop yourself, and um, make yourself heard. Uh, get edu more educated about your country. Uh, educate those who are younger, uh, especially who, the kids who are born outside Eritrea. Uh, educate them remind them of the history of the sacrifices that our ancestors did and uh, let us all work together uh, towards the goal that we want. Uh, let us overcome our differences uh, and let us unite. Uh, a point I would like to add uh, that is very important message I would like to give to the youth in general uh, is uh, let's not inherit uh, these, uh, I guess, toxins about, uh, about tribalism and, uh, and uh, making differences is a, such a big deal and a, a negative thing. Uh, especially those who are born outside the Eritrea, let's say, or, or those who never really lived tribalism in Eritrea. Unfortunately, I find examples of people be living outside Eritrea and not really dealing with that tribalism face to face, but still inheriting them from their parents. Because uh, a lot of parents uh, sometimes teach their children about, uh, neg I guess, negative concepts about, uh, about tribes and how tribes have this, uh, this uh, God knows for how long have been, have been fighting. And these, I think these people learn that by default, this person is my enemy. This uh, other tribe, I'm not supposed to be friends with that tribe. Where in the matter of fact, they didn't live the wars. They, they just, they just uh, the, the negativity has been passed down to them. So let's not look, let's not teach our new generations these, these, uh, these uh, nodules, these cancers, I would say. Let's pass, uh, let's pass the positive side to them. Let's, let's teach them how to co, uh, coexist with their brothers and sisters and to not look at, uh, uh, at the difference. Uh, I, for, for instance, I never really, uh, because I never really lived in Eritrea, I would get really excited whenever I get to know some Eritrean person. Let's say here in Sweden, well, if I'm introduced somewhere at work to someone Eritrean, I would be really excited because that person is Eritrean. But unfortunately, some people don't really share that with us. Some people, oh, you're Muslim. Oh, you're uh, from that tribe. Let's not look at that. 
let's let's just uh, let's give our children let's pass the positivity to our children and move on from uh, from tribalism uh, to, in order to move on from that huge problem that we have and in order to to pass to pass to the next point which is building a country yeah i think uh, the same thing also uh, i think uh, we should be as as a youth we should be more engaged in uh, in eritrea and in this matter of political uh, in the political field or education or everything. But the most important thing, as Ryan said, we must be united. Eritreans should, uh, should always think about Eritrea as a unit. I cannot succeed uh, as an Eritrean without the help of other Eritreans, without the help of other tribes, without the help of other religions. I need their help and they need mine. So we need to be united. We need to, to be one, uh, one people of Eritrea. And thank you. Oh, that was beautiful, guys. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to our event today. Um, as you can see from the title, um, we have the grandchildren of uh, Idris, uh, Hamid Idris Awate here with us. Um, this event is brought to you by the Alternative Eritrea. Uh, please follow the, the club for more events uh, similar this one. Um, we will be opening the floor up to any questions or any comments that anyone from the audience would like to, to come up. Um, if you're interested, uh, just raise your hand. Um, we, ha we have opened it up right now. Um, while that is happening, um, we will be bringing um, individuals up. Uh, just one last question, um, Hamid, uh, Rowan, and Aisha. If you, were, if you had a chance to meet your grandfather today, what would you say to him? What would you know? Say to him. Mm -hmm. Sorry, say what would you say? Yeah, what would you say? I would say yeah. thank you very much. I'm sorry that we we did not meet your expectation. I'm sorry we did not reach the goal that you wanted us all to reach. I'm sorry that Eritrea is not the Eritrea that you imagined that you worked for, but I promise that we will try to make it better. First, I will say thank you very much for your sacrifice and for your friend's sacrifice. And thank you for your uh, for the road that you gave us. And as Aisha said, uh, sorry, because we, wouldn't, we, we, were not, we were not uh, what you expected us to be. And we will work hard, we will work more hard. Uh, and uh, we hope that we achieve what you started, yeah. That's the same for me, I would promise him that uh, I will not let what he died for uh, unachieved. I will not let uh, the road that he get, that he started uncompleted. Uh, I will keep on walking on the path that he started walking on, that he, 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 he drew for us the map. Uh, I'll be going by that and uh, inshallah, uh, what he started will be finished by us.
according to the people who come to the stage. Um, so the first person is uh, Amitya. Um, I'll give the floor to ask you a question. Please make it brief. my question. Uh, I would like to say like thank you for one I should permit uh, to be here. Uh, this is the first time that I heard of uh, anything about uh, the family of Amadur Sawada. Uh, since I know the history of Africa 1998, uh, every September 1st, we celebrate Hawada, uh, Amit Sawada and then <clears throat> Uh, we heard a lot of stories about him uh, through personal stories or the national level, but I have never heard of him having any family, uh, wife, children, and now grandchildren. So thank you guys for the moderators, and then thank you for the grandchildren of Hamadur Sawada. To me, uh, so for me, it was, like, it was a big deal. I was one room, and then somebody was like mentioning the uh, safe room about the grandchildren of granddaughter of Sawada. Uh, so thank you guys for, uh, I'm sure you guys were like active in the other uh, social media, but this is the first time, uh, let alone hearing from you guys, but uh, knowing that he has children and they're not my children. So um, thank you uh, for being here and for speaking up your mind. Uh, and for me, uh, September 1 is, is, is a day to what a uh, day of remembrance, a day of uh, uh, passing our uh, gratitude to uh, the Doman himself, Amir Sawada, and all Eritreans who died uh, in the uh, liberation uh, struggle, and then even after that to defend uh, the, uh, the sovereignty of Eritrea. And also a day uh, through it for me to, win, to continue the torch so that I can uh, do my. Uh, um, like a uh, dead three uh, uh, um, is enough, but uh, like you guys said, not the education for being a member of any party to see that Eritrea in the future one day soon uh, will have a free and democratic country when the rule of law. Uh, uh, it's going to be up on the people and the land of Eritrea when every tribe, every person, every religion, every uh, ethnic group, as some of us uh, refer it, uh, 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 enjoys the freedom of being Eritrean and uh, governing ourselves, choosing our our government or representative, uh, regardless of our tribes, ethnicity, or uh, religion. Uh, I remember when I was in college, uh, I think earlier uh, one of you guys said, if you're having that name, uh, languages, when I said that it is, it is a beauty, uh, as a small country like Eritrea, having that uh, beautiful differences uh, so that we can use it for our own advantage, which is great. When I was in college, I remember uh, one of the professors, Eritrean professor, was telling us, if you're like in Europe, like uh, let's say French or Italians, you would born as a French, you will grow as friends of French and you will die as a French. But in Eritrea, if you just travel from Asmara to Karen, that's uh, just like 100 or 100 something kilometers, uh, you will be able to uh, to see a number of ethnic groups, tribes, languages, mm -hmm. and religions. That, will, that will makes us as a uh in, in culture and then we should use that uh, for our own advantage and for our own unity. And then I really, really appreciate you guys. You have that mentality. And then uh, also, like you said, uh, to take on the torch and to continue uh, what Hamid Pusawara started and what all our fathers and uncles and aunts have started as, as a responsibility of all uh, the Eritreans. Um, so thank you again. <laughs> My question, one question is, uh, if you guys like Bernard, a member of, I think one of you said, a member of uh, Eritrea Liberation Fund. If you're not a member of this and then you were just a regular Eritrean and then you could travel to Eritrea to see uh, uh, the history that your father made, to see, to, to visit those places, uh, to visit the Mount Adal. Uh, I'm sure if you choose to do that, 
uh, we will know about you uh, a lot, and you will be somehow. I'm gonna put this as in, in quotes. Uh, royalties of the Arab struggle, and then all that has any day, like any thought has crossed your mind for you guys, like, you know what, let's forget about politics. Let's just, just go to Eritrea and enjoy and then see uh, what the history of our father was, because uh, we don't know how long it's going to take uh, that for Eritrea to be free or uh, for us to go back to our country and then live uh, that dream life. Has it ever crossed your mind? Just, just let's make peace whatever government or let's not care about politics and let's go there and then see what our grandfather has started as it ever crossed your mind. Thank you. Um, thank um, you. Thank uh, you. Uh, mm. We will take a couple of questions at a time. So uh, guys, uh, note that down. Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, I will take uh, Jam, Jam Sal, and then uh, we'll yes. go back to that. Hi guys. Uh, what I um, uh, it's uh, what I what I want to say. Uh, if you come uh, back uh, closer to the mic. Yeah, yeah. What about now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, what I want to ask Hamid and Rowani, uh, if you, uh, as we all know, that uh, our grandfather Hamid Awad is uh, most of the stories are missing. So, if you can tell us something about his personality uh, yeah, for more information, it should be good for us as a, as a history. Thank you. Thank you, Jam. Um, just uh, quickly to um, also, I would like to refer you to the book about Awate that was, that was released recently, uh, a few years ago. Uh, there are a lot of information about him, his personalities, uh, his personality, and also his uh, uh, leadership and his background. So that, that's one thing that you can always refer to, I guess. But uh, I will leave that for the um, for, for them to answer. So uh, back to you, uh, and whoever wants to start, go ahead. Uh, I would like to answer the first question by. Uh, Amiche, uh, if I'm pronouncing that name right, I'm sorry if I'm not. Uh, you said, uh, would we, have we ever thought of uh, leaving it all behind us and just moving to Eritrea and to just see, uh, see Eritrea, see the historical places that we've always heard about, uh, visit our, grand, uh, our grandpa's grave, visit uh, the Mount of Adal and all of that. Uh, actually, no. Uh, the simple uh, answer is never. It never ever crossed my mind to leave this all behind and just move to Eritrea because what's the point of moving to a place if it's just a place? Uh, Eritrea is not, is not just a piece of land that I would like to go see and it's not just monuments that I want to go look at. Uh, it's, a it's a country where I want to go live if I'm not going to be able to live, and by live, I mean have my rights, be able to express my opinion, live with my, uh, with my, my people in peace, uh, not have to fight to live, uh, not be imprisoned, uh, not, be, not fear for my life, then what's the point of going to that place? Uh, it would never cross my mind to leave the struggle. I never regret any word I said against... Uh, against the regime in Eritrea, against uh, uh, the, the government, which I don't, I don't even want to call it a government, I say regime. Uh, I never, it never crossed our minds. Now, I'm not just talking about myself, uh, our whole family. Uh, this is not something, uh, this is not something that's ever crossed our minds. And uh, I think that that answers your question. Thank you. Like to add to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for me, I did think about uh, moving to Eritrea, but it's of course impossible for me in my situation as an Eritrean. And uh, 
I would love uh, someday in my life to go to Eritrea to visit all the places that my grandfather been and my family has been. And uh, yeah, I, I really, really like to visit Eritrea and live there if it's possible. So yeah, I, I will do it someday in, in, uh, in the future. Uh, uh, about the second question, Jam asked about it, about uh, more information about uh, uh, Judo's uh, personality. Uh, unfortunately, uh, being, so my dad is our source. He, so Baba was three years old when my grandfather uh, died, so he didn't get to live with him. So all that he knows is the same that everyone else knows, which is information that is got, gathered from people who have been uh, with him, the information that he gathered from my grandmother, from my aunt, because there are, uh, I have one aunt that is, uh, one aunt that is uh, older than my father, from his friends. So we don't have any more information than, uh, that is already uh, is in the book. So I would recommend the book that is my recommended earlier. If you have any comments to make or any questions that you'd like to add, uh, please do come up, raise your hand, and I'll bring you up. Um, how about Miche and Jam? Your question has been answered. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Let's have uh, people coming up, so we don't allow them. Father, uh, welcome to the stage. Uh, I believe uh, you weren't here earlier. We are having a room with uh, the grandchildren of uh, Hamad al Jishawata. And if you had any question or if there's something you would like to say, please go ahead and come up with us. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, first of all, I appreciate all of you. Just uh, remember this day. This is what they call it uh, free of the people of Eritrea to be themselves, to be as human, to be to have a dignity. So our dad is saying, grandfather, this 12 person, we just go the uh, to fight the big country that they call it Ethiopia, wherever I'm not gonna go to this, you know, those people with four guns, you know, they stand, Hamid Awate and his friend, the man, those 12 people, this man, he was, speaking all the language he was speaking english italian you know he was very intelligent he was very smart he was very you know um, in his time and most people who was doing a politic inside eritrea they know when they start to do this struggle of fight they choose a man who can do this and but the problem is you know we hear about him from people close to him it was fighting with him it was part with him but the problem is you know Hamid Awad and his friends like became we forgot them like never existed in our life because of a political misunderstanding.
or a standoff or a group, you know, go to the other group and to change the history of that country. And I hope so, all of you as a young, you know, uh, I'm like Hamid, Aisha, Rwanda, say I'm, I'm almost to close the daughter's uh, age. And I know him, I know him good, not that, yeah. because in a Sudan, but it's a good to, to see you guys as a young to remember this day, and especially this guy and his friend, those 11 people, you know? So I don't have to add that much, but like what I say, you know, like what a smile say, I okay. There's a book, there's a people, it's on all the people. And even his wife, I'm not wrong, she passed not that long. She was she was in Eritrea. She was in the same area. There's Mohammed Awate grown up and born in there, you know. And even people in Eritrea. They will know know about her. She was there. No one know about her. You no, know? was very sad. Not even about his kid and his son. Not his son and his grandkid. His wife. And that is always a shame. To whatever you call it, government or regime, wherever you know, it was very shame. And his friends, they was there. In the same area, in a gash and a barca, you know, two of them, you know, and no one know about them. People that was writing history about new generation, about Shabia, about Jabha, but they forgot those who started, they was there, all the people. Was Syrian, but a good you guys to do this and to remember and to, to know who this guy and who's those 11 person with him. They start to was four gun, four gun, you know. They would not have that, the rest the gun is, you know, they used to have so and uh, thank you very much. Keep going on it as a young people. Go to your root, understand it, and make you one. This guy never say high land and low land. Never say Christian and a Muslim. He never say that's what the English say about him. They fight with him. You know, he fight with the English. He fight with the Italy. Not just Haile Selassie. He fight was all, you know. So thank you very much. Just to give me this opportunity. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, welcome everyone just to reset the room. Uh, today we are celebrating the 60 years since the uh, beginning of the Eritrean Revolution, which uh, gave us Eritrea, the country that we know today. And we are accompanied by the grandchildren of uh, Hamid Riz Awate, who was the first man to uh, start the revolution, to shoot uh, the first uh, bullet. And as we speak, uh, some of you might have joined us very late, but uh, we heard from them. We heard for uh, where they stand right now from the struggle of the Eritrean people. And we are in the q a session right now and if you have any question to them please do come up and ask your questions i will now uh, pass the floor to salah uh, and then robbie so salah if you could uh, make a comment or your question brief and uh, and and then we move to robbie salah go ahead thank you smile uh, uh, first and foremost i want to welcome uh, uh, the grandchildren of a great, uh, legendary, historic, and a very great man of uh, man of history. We can say, 
really, I, I want to welcome you. I want to, like, I feel humbled to, to talk to you guys. Uh, it's a great, a great pleasure, actually. It's once in a lifetime, kind of. So uh, I feel humbled, actually, for you and for the people who organize this meeting to uh, vote all of you. Uh, uh, I want to tell one thing one, that uh, my neighbor, she is dead now. My husband, she, uh, her husband was uh, one of the police killed by the early um, Eritrean fighters, including those, uh, obviously, Awata was there. Probably he might have been killed by Awata. Uh, she, she, her husband was a police, but um, at some point when they went to the expedition, they didn't find them. But the narration that 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 um, that was at that time was uh, Awata was like this, Awata was like that. Awata, he used to simply say like, whenever we hear like Awata is around here, they they would pee in their pants. That, that, even even before like, let alone facing him. Just when they hear that Awata is going there, so uh, like when I was growing up, when I was a kid, I used to hear these stories. She was telling us about the husband killed by those early, like by the first, uh, first, first fighters actually in Awata. So for me, uh, today is a special day meeting the people who really was removing those evil people from Eritrea or, 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 or the people who started um started the liberation the Eritrean liberation from uh, the Eritrean struggle in general uh it's, it's a great pleasure for me like I feel I, I like I feel like is it, is it a real thing kind of am I really uh, listening to the people who are just the next next generation of the great uh, our day? so I uh, just want to thank you guys for accepting this this uh, and Really, I feel humbled even uh, to hear you, the whole story that you were narrating, your understanding of the Eritrean politics and your your way of thinking in general. It reminds me like this, this, these people came from the, definitely Awata should have been there. Like, I feel, it feels like like you were trained by Awata yourself, like uh, himself. So it was, it was a great time for me. I really enjoyed uh, the whole um discussion today's discussion and it is really uh, the first uh, the first september 1st i could say that i am awakened like uh, what you guys said thank you thank you so um robbie do you want to go ahead yeah hi guys uh alaikum. i want to say uh, here who are here uh, to meeting the gang uh, Doctors of Awate, I want to say, Abdullah Makorat, Harakmi Abdullah. Hey, Samson. Samarhawa, Tata, I know this is the Dalla, Ati Sanjira. Anyway, sorry. Come to your mind, it's one day coming here. Anyways, thank you for uh, getting me up, uh, Smile Hawa. Ms. Kustam Sawan Katamali. And Aisha, welcome, pleasure to meet you. Uh, yeah, sorry, Kamzi, I've rushed in the other I think I, I, I need to speak in English, sorry. Taiska, uh, Hamad Idris Awate, uh, especially until we, uh, earlier what Rawan was saying. And then Ismail was uh, also saying, "It really uh, what yeah, I, I was out for a, for a bit, but it was really great." Uh, yeah, the the key is uh, the key to to uh, to achieve what these heroes envisioned. You know, the Eritrea they uh, dreamt about. See uh, to put aside our differences or, you know, find a way to to come together uh, to achieve that dream, you know? Uh, if, if you think about it uh, in life, uh, there is nothing uh, bigger than uh, trusting someone with your life, right? Uh, this being beside someone 
on a fight, on a fight of life and death, and trusting that other person with your life. That, that's what these heroes uh, teach us, uh, irrespective of our religion, irrespective of our uh, uh, ethnicity or tribe, uh, irrespective of where we are, where we are from, uh, from the country. That, that diversity should be our belief. Uh, it's already said. I'm just repeating what I say. But that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be our downfall. And on a, on a special day like this, as Eritreans collectively, this is what we should keep uh, in our mind. Uh, if those heroes were uh, able to to fight together, try to trust in each other with their life uh, for the Eritrea they envisioned, that it that is what we should do. Whatever differences we have, uh, the law, the constitution, the Eritrean people is going to address that. But as Eritreans, our priority should be that uh, find a way to narrow our differences and you know fight our main enemy, which is the brutal dictatorship we have back home. So thank you. Thank you, Samson. Um, thank you, Samson. Um, thank you, Samson. Is it, is it mine or Mira? Uh, Mira. Uh, yeah. Just before that, I would like to have more what happened earlier. I was second late. Uh, but I think you see some people uh, decide to show our, their truth at the wrong times. I hope that doesn't interrupt our meeting, but thank you, Samson, for your kind words. and. Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, no, I was just
Uh, I would say that we need to find uh, one table that we can all sit and discuss that all the political parties that we talked about who have uh, the differences between them need to sit and discuss those differences and focus on the goal and be united in. And this table is uh, in a form of uh, which I, uh, sorry, in a form of a, uh, a council, which is called Eritrean National Council for Democratic Change. Uh, so it is a, a place where all the political parties can come and they discuss their goal freely. So I think that is a very big and important start that could get us closer to our goal. So, uh, so that is a free place for everyone to come contribute, uh, add their opinion. I think that would be an answer. I would like to also add uh, something. Uh, I think uh, the, the, something that would be a great first step for everyone, every individual, like you said, uh, there's a lot of individuals who don't have that much, uh, who, are not, who are not joined with a group. Uh, I think the first thing, the most important thing is to show interest. Uh, first, you have to show, we, we have to show that we are interested in doing something in Eritrea and we're not only sitting there watching. So first we have to be interested, uh, involved. Second of all, we have to come together and talk with each other. It doesn't have to be uh, a political party uh, at the beginning. We just have to be discussing this thing between us as Eritreans, just exchanging thoughts harmlessly. I know because uh, for a lot of times when we hear the word uh, a political party or politics or whatever it is, people get intimidated by the, by the word uh, for, for several reasons. So if we are, if, in order to, to avoid this intimidation, let's first start by simple steps, which are coming together, discussing our issues, identifying our issues, trying to uh, come up with, uh, listen to each other, listen to what we have and come up with solutions. And I'm pretty sure that someone within that group is gonna, is gonna, is, is, is gonna have some, some, uh, idea we're gonna you're gonna organize yourselves you're gonna contact i guess bigger groups we're, we're uh, a difference is going to be made uh by simply just being with each other contacting each other so i think the first step for us is to get to know each other and talk uh and then uh, comes the organization whether we join another organization we make our own our own organization yeah but most importantly making ourselves heard this is the most important thing, in my opinion. Uh, I also think that uh, communication is very important. Uh, we need to know what the other uh, what the other side is thinking, what they want, and what they need to, to move forward. And I also think, as individuals, we must uh, uh, we must not be silent. We need to. to, to to speak about uh, the, pe the, the, the people who are making, uh, who, are, who are exploiting our differences. We need to, 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 to tell them that they are in the wrong and uh, they must not do that. And as Aran said, we need to, to talk to each other, understand uh, one another uh, in order to move forward. really talk about their ideas of uh, like having communication and then uh, towards respecting each other uh, uh, I, uh, my also like planning and aim hope for the future of Eritrea is um, I have like two quotes from uh, my profile here in the girls for March it was our king uh, that says like our lives begin to end the day I'm silent I think it's a uh, so what Hamid said is like uh, being silent uh, is no more, no longer an option. We have to speak up. And the second one is like I have decided to stick to love because hate is too great a burden to bear. Um, what I see a lot of political parties since I uh, get some some interest in political sense of the Eritrean 
uh, people, whether uh, their position or whoever they are. It's like mainly our drive starts from the hate of uh, some group or some political party, some persons, rather than love to, to our people and country. So like my aim is I want to be part of any movement that uh, that's its base or main ideology is because of the love of its people, the people in the highlands, lowlands, and the coastal areas, and the love for the state of, uh, of Eritrea for anyone that doesn't matter what their background is, or religion, or a tribe, or ethnicity is, they claim to be Eritrean. And then uh, the love of that people, uh, who uh, they identify themselves as Eritrean, and the love of that country, the serenity, that should be the drive force for anyone to go forward. Like they say, to have that mentality to to uh, to reset the button so that we can have that open discussion, whatever. We have to be able to uh, ask the uncomfortable questions uh, so that we can get it out there so that we can find a common ground uh, to achieve our goals but thank you for your insight it's beautiful i hope we can meet in the future and then we can do something for our country thank you thank you Amche. um i had for you um Musa, you raise your hand i don't know if you're there and others in the audience if you'd like to come up Please do come up, uh, raise your hand or bring it up. If you have any comments that you'd like to make or any questions that you'd like to ask, please do come up. Um, shortly, we'll be closing uh, this room. It's before that, I would like people to, to come up. Uh, those of you who might be so please do come up and I'll bring it up. Uh, we would like to hear from you as well if you have any questions or any comments that you'd like to ask. Sorry, Sven, but the uh, right. Sorry, if you cannot come up to the stage, um, you can also send any one of the mods questions. Um, that is also an option if you are unable to make it up to the stage or if you're busy. Um, and one of the mods will ask the question for you. First, I'm profoundly grateful and humbled that the grandchildren of the father of the Eritrean revolution have taken time to share their perspective with us. You earlier suggested that carrying the name of Awad is a privilege that has come with its own set of responsibility. For those of us, especially the youth and those living in schools that want to re recommit to upholding your grandfather's legacy, how can we support you and how can we keep up with you and the things you are working on? That is then. Quickly also for everyone, um, for everyone watching us on Facebook, uh, you could also send your questions on the comment section. Um, as mentioned, we are live on both um, um, Clubhouse and, and Facebook right now. So um, if you do have questions, please send them through the comment section. Rowan, Hamid, and Aisha, you can go ahead and ask the question. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I would say that yeah, it is a big responsibility, like we said, and uh, uh, this responsibility, I think it's not, it does not lie just on us, uh, us, the family of uh, Hamid Dris Awate, the grandchildren of Hamid Dris Awate, it, it lies on every Eritrean, uh, especially the youth, because I feel like the older generation uh, has tried uh, their way uh, with things they tried to 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 follow the steps of of our grandfathers. Uh, they tried to do their best. Uh, now it's our turn. We need to try. We need to come up with new ways, uh, ways that would that could get us closer. And 
I think that they also rely on us. I hear this a lot from, from uh, my father generation. They all would say to us that you are the new generation. You, you can think of new ways of new solutions. Uh, so yeah, if we like, again, like uh, what Rowan and Hamid uh, previously talked about that, if we could just sit, discuss, uh, then solution would come up and uh, then we could work on them together. So I think that would be the simplest answer. Uh, something small thing I would just like to add is, uh, I think the person who read the question said that they, um, uh, they believe that we do have a big responsibility and that they look up to us and they want to, uh, they look up to us. Uh, one thing I just want to say is, uh, I am, uh, when, when I tell you uh, what I think uh, you should do, I'm also telling myself. This is not, uh, I don't find myself by any chance uh someone to for, for you to look up to i just i i have a responsibility exactly like every one of you have uh we all have we all have the same responsibility and we all share the same uh uh weight upon us uh we all have to like uh aisha said before me uh come up with solutions a, sh a solution is not i'm not going to be coming with a, uh, up with a solution by myself it's all going to be cooperation, uh, discussion. Uh, a big, uh, a big chunk of it has to do with education, especially for the new generations who don't know much about Eritrea to begin with. So let's educate ourselves about Eritrea. A person who does not know their history does not know their future. So let's know about our history. Know, and that way we're going to find out about our future. And I give this advice again to myself before uh, any one of you. I do share the same uh, uh, position as any one of you, me being the granddaughter of Hamid Idris Awad does not make me by any chance, uh, uh, I guess, better or someone to look up to. I am also uh, a person who needs uh, to, to, to get better at this and to work just like you do. Thank you. Yeah. I can add a uh, little something. Uh, I think this uh, the responsibility falls on all uh, upon all Eritreans, and uh, we need to work uh, as a unit. And every Eritrean should uh, sh should be wanting to build a name for himself, uh, exactly as our uh, grandfathers did. We need to, to have a goal. We need to, to set uh, a goal that we can reach in, in the future. We need to, to we need to, to have a point that that others will think uh, that these people did something. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Hamid. Um, I do have a question. Um, but if you have uh, any more questions, a couple more questions. About two hours. About two hours. Live soon. Um, one question I have um, is directed to the ladies. Um, how do you see the role of the young Eritrean women in both um, the social and political um, circles, especially in regards to, to Eritrean? Um, yeah, within the Eritrean community. If you want, I could also read a second question and then you could just prepare your answer. Um, I could do that as well. Um, a second question comes to us um, from uh, Tammy. She can't come up and speak right now. I'm sorry, the first one was from Salah. Um, the question states, uh, there have been um, some remix of the historical facts connected to Hamid Idris Awati, starting from the picture um, of uh, him that was initially shared. Um, why do you think that this has been done? Uh, I would like to answer the first question from uh, Salah, the role of women. Uh, 
women in the Eritrean communities have always, and in the Eritrean community, have always made themselves heard. Uh, from the beginning of revolution to this day, we have amazing personalities of uh, women who've always been hand to hand to with men, uh, martyrs, uh, uh, who have always been and still are fighting and have always fought. So my role as a woman is nowhere different from any uh, from any other person's role, man, be, be it man or youth or anyone. Our role is uh, to come together and to build our, uh, the, the women who in, uh, but maybe I think we, we, we almost have a, a bigger role uh, concerning the women in Eritrea because uh, we all know, or maybe we can only imagine uh, the situation they have, women in Eritrea. Uh, that regime in Eritrea does not differentiate between man or woman. Uh, everyone is, is affected by their, but by their acts, by their violence. Uh, so we have, I think something, if there's something extra that we as women have to do is to focus on the, on the rights uh, and the, the voices of our sisters back there in Eritrea who, who don't have the chance to talk or to, to do anything about their situation. Uh, oppressed women is, every woman in Eritrea is an oppressed woman. Uh, so uh, if there is something more uh, additional is that to make them heard, uh, to fight uh, and uh, make their image seen by the rest of the world. Uh, I would answer, uh, I think it was uh, Abdurrahman. I don't know if it's right, the first question about a woman's role. So uh, I think that my, uh, the same as Rowan said, that's what I thought uh, immediately. I don't think that women's role is, uh, uh, is any smaller than men's role in in uh, in the in the Eritrean struggle in the Eritrean uh, in the Eritrean uh, fight uh, in the Eritrean building at the walking the march towards towards Eritrea if you might call it but and I think this is one of the differences that we need to overcome we need to stop saying women's role and men role it's just it's men's role so it's just uh, it does not um so they both have the same role and like she said uh, women had a very big role in the bit from the beginning till now till now uh in the Eritrean uh fight and uh, i also think that there is a saying in in arabic i don't know if it is the same in english but they say that the mother is the first school so i think so in this in this case mothers can uh, from a young age, mothers and fathers can educate their kids uh, about Eritrea, teach teach them more about their countries, uh, grow their their commitment, their 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 connection to their country stronger. So this is a way that we can, uh, so that that we can uh, contribute in other than the normal way that we all uh, talked about earlier, that which is uh, working on ourselves and fighting the path that would that we think suit us fighting um in fighting that, i think there was another question about uh the picture uh i think so the pictures that it it just i don't know how to, get, to call it so it's something normal that it would happen so people would like to change history <laughs> this is a way to change in it so nothing more nothing less Thank you. Uh, yeah, I can answer about uh, the second question, which is uh, the remix and the facts and, and the, the image. I think with with success, there are always going to be people who are going to try to ruin the image of the, the, the people. There are always going to be those who doubt uh, and uh, uh, throughout history, we always seen wrong information, wrong uh, wrong uh, allegations, and uh, there there always going to be uh, these things. But we looked past, we try to look past uh, these things, 
we try to to look for the truth and uh, avoid all the negative uh, information and the negative uh, allegations and uh, we just focus on our goal yeah thank you The armed struggle. Um, in July 1960, in the city of Cairo, a group of young Eritrean students and intellectuals held, held a meeting and formed the Eritrean Liberation Front, the ELF. The group consisted of the following names Idris Mohammed Adam, the president of the National Assembly of Eritrea, Idris Osman Galaidos. Um, a graduate of uh, the law uh, of um, a graduate a graduate of uh, the law school um, of Cairo University, Muhammad Saleh uh, Hamid, um, a graduate of the law school of Cairo, Cairo University, Saeed Hussein, a student of Al Azhar University in Cairo, um, Adam Muhammad Akti, um, um, a student from the graduate uh, a graduate from the University of Cairo. Taha Mohammed Noor, a graduate from it, uh, Italy. men, equipment, and provisions. Nevertheless, they waged their, fierce, their first fierce battle against the Ethiopian occupation in Mount Adal. The freedom fighters, the Rahil, or pioneers, who accompanied, who accompanied uh, uh, Awate, were the following. Abdul Mohammed Faid, Ibrahim Mohammed Ali, Humed Gadef, Awate Mohammed Faid, Mohamed Bearek, Mohamed Adam Hassan, Saleh Girog, Ahmed Fika, Mohamed Al Hassan Dohen, Adam Figurai, Ali Berit, Idris Mahmoud, Omer Keray. So again, um, just uh, also to uh, amongst these 13 people, um, 
who were with Awate, the first person was Abdul Muhammad Faid, um, the first martyr, Erosha martyr, in February 1962. Uh, and uh, sorry, in uh, October 1962, when uh, uh, the second battle took place, uh, the Battle of uh, Omar. Um, the, we also have a few people uh, that we'd like to honor the, the group that joined the Russian struggle. Uh, these are the people who were part of the, of the um, English uh, army in, uh, in Sudan and later on became part of the uh, establishing army for the Sudanese uh, army who are Eritreans, original Eritreans. And when they heard about the revolution, they joined, they joined the Eritrean revolution uh, in February 1962. Um, I would like Yahya to read the names, that's okay. Yes, uh, actually, as uh, ELU was getting stronger, uh, new world uh, fighters were joining in who, who were previously in the Sudanese military forces. Uh, Judge and Adam Jasir uh, joined our in a later time on February 17. Also, another group consisting of 11 people joined. Their names were Hamad Idris Haj, Omar Hamid uh, Azad, Bahar Salam, Man Hamid Ibrahim Hamad Baduri, Muhammad Omar Abdullah Abu Tayyara, later known as Abu Tayyara, Omar Muhammad Ali Damar, Kisha Muhammad Rizal, Muhammad Ibrahim, Abdullah Idris Azam, and Adam Glim. And just for the record, for because we have been claimed, um, we're all Eritrean by birth, by lineage, by everything, and previously were enlisted in the Sudanese army. Thank you, Yahya. Um, I will just now give the, the floor to uh. Rowan, Aisha, and, and Awate to uh, make their final remarks. Uh, we're about to close the room shortly, but we also uh, gonna end after the, the final remarks by a song. And uh, for your surprise, guys, Rowan will be playing the song for us. Uh, she's an artist as well. So um, I'll give you the, the, the floor to uh, for your final remarks, and then we, we'll come back to you, uh, Rowan. So Aisha, we'll begin with you. I'm sorry, can I have a second? Just to say one thing. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Now, just I want to remind, you know, in my knowledge, because people I can see, I only just look up at the picture of Hamid Awad, I can see pictures. As a man seated in his, his look, his forest in front of the person. I don't know, they, they put it as Hamid Awad there, but uh, as long as my knowledge, you know, and study and asking people of that person. His name is Saleh Jamil Shukar. He's from uh, Karan. He's one of uh, one of the first, it was, it was Italian, then one of the first who joined those people who second were able just to make sure because people to know the differences of the pictures. And I saw one on the audience, but it was not there now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Aisha. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, first of all, I would say, uh, I would say, Allah uh, irhamu shuhada kullun. I would say thank you to them. Uh, I hope that we all uh, keep them in our dua. Uh, remember their great achievement. Be thankful, grateful for what they did, for what they offered for what they sacrificed and um, again uh, we should all this is this this day was a very big encouragement for me and I'm sure for my brother and sister also to 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 work uh, towards Eritrea uh, and I hope that it would be the same for all the youth that are listening to us today that uh, I hope that we all can come together uh, look over our differences and work for a better Eritrea, the dream that we all, I'm sure that we all have. 
Uh, I would like to thank you, Ismail. I would like to thank uh, Amira. Uh, thank you very much for allowing us uh, to come join you here today. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for your um, uh, activity, for being active in this uh, field and uh, your efforts are appreciated. And uh, I hope that we have been like guests today. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, happy September. And I hope the next September would be in Eritrea. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yes, I would like also to thank uh, everyone who's been here today. Uh, and I would like to say happy 1st of September. And we hope that uh, we uh, celebrate the other 1st of September in Eritrea. And uh, I hope also that we overcome our uh, differences and uh, combine and uh, we join together. And I would like to thank you, Ismail and Amira, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, and uh, I really feel proud of your work and uh, you're, you're using your platforms very well. And I thank you for this. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you. I would like just to make a small correction. I said that the name of Sorry, I said the name Ibrahim Muhammad Baduri. It's actually Ibrahim Muhammad Bahdurai. Uh, sorry for the mistake, actually. Uh, I would like to say uh, thank you very much for having us here today. Uh, I am very humbled and I feel small that I am. Uh, uh, I guess I'm, I'm, we are always uh, compared with this great name that we, we carry. Uh, uh, I'm very happy, very honored to be here. Uh, inshallah, this, uh, this meeting had some, uh, some good insights for those who listen. Uh, inshallah, I hope it added uh, some good perspectives. Uh, I hope September is always uh, a day, first of September is a day uh, of us looking back, uh, reflecting on our past, reflecting on uh, how it was six, six years ago, uh, on, and, and re re recorrecting uh, the path, going back to the path that we, we got diverted from. Uh, I hope it's uh, a reminder. I hope it's uh, uh, a, a milestone for us to, to be always uh, working for uh, Eritrea, Eritrea that we love, Eritrea that our, our, uh, our grandparents have died for, sacrificed their life for. Uh, I, I thank you, Ismail and Amira, for giving us this uh, wonderful opportunity to come here and to talk, to be with our people. Uh, and inshallah, we, I hope we have been a great addition to this, uh, to your day, to your celebration of the 1st of September. Uh, I guess now maybe it's time for the closure. So I would. Uh, uh, I just really wanted to um, play this uh, small song. Uh, we always sing this song home, uh, and especially uh, on September because. It, it really has a very big uh, meaning for us. Uh, I will just say a couple of lyrics from it. It says, September wa anta shu'latu al-wadda'a. September wa anta al-nuru ba'da al-dhulma. September wa tabqa al-azm wa al-israr. Tabqa al-tahiyyatu lil-shaheed wa al-ikbar. These words to me are uh, speak loudly. And uh, this, song, this, uh, this song has always held a great meaning for us. Uh, that's why I would like to play it uh, as a small symbol uh, for this month. Uh, shall I hope you like it.
messed up at the end. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope to, you enjoyed it. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Eritrea um, gained its independence in 91, but we are about, we're yet to gain the Eritrean people's uh, freedom. So this is a, a, a landmark, 60 years, as it's a big achievement. I think it's, a, it's a, so many years, six decades had already uh, gone by. And it's a reminder for everyone that uh, there are a lot to be done uh, and time uh, yes, if it is of an essence, but at the same time, looking back into our history, six years from now, what would we say to the next generation? Today is our time uh, to, to change the status quo, to create a better country together. Um, what I would like to say is uh, follow this club. Uh, we have a lot of uh, discussions that we, we hold here. And um, it is for all of us. And what are I would say on this day, it's just like we promise that uh, one day we will liberate the country from uh, the dictatorship and it will be free. And please don't focus on the differences and negatives that we hear. Um, Higdef can say whatever they want to say. They can try to um, derail us or, um, you know, divert our focus. But that's not the point. The point is, uh, these are their tactics. And as of today, we stay, uh, you know, focused and we promise we'll continue on the path that was paved by our ancestors. Uh, I'll give the floor for uh, a second, Amira, and maybe if you have final remarks to make, and then uh, we'll close the room. Also, Jam, sorry, I saw you text uh, very late, so if you have anything uh, to say. Uh, before them, and then uh, we, we we go to uh, Nabil second, and then Amir finally. Uh, yeah, I, I can go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I think I mean uh, thank thank you for coming. Uh, I think it was a. Uh... It's inspiring, it's not just because it's the first of September, but also I think it does. Um, it's, it's also a reminder that it is um, we all have a as every trend we we, we owe it to those who. Who, are fight, who have been fighting for 30 years, um, we owe it to them to, uh, to, to do whatever is in our um, is uh, in our power to uh, to help um, with uh, removing the current regime and uh, to uh, our brother and sisters um, what what they deserve. Um, that's the the, the the freedom that uh, um, we've been fighting for. Um, so it was very inspiring to uh, to hear you uh, today. Thank you. Also, I would like to say, when our grandparents fought and when our parents, uh, they didn't believe that their but we are. So let's make our fight count. Let's make sure that our children don't have to go what we're going through and make sure that this is where we complete and finish what our grandparents started and, and their legacy in the way that they imagined it to be, in a way that really makes them proud. Thank you. Sorry, Samantha, I'm going to have to meet you. Sure.
to uh, to one Aisha and Hamid. Uh, they 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 told me uh, we want to tell you that we acknowledge you. We uh, uh, we're so thankful for your services. Most of all, we're so thankful for the, the sacrifice and the martyrdom of um, your grandfather and uh, our hero uh, Hamid Rizawata. Um, and I say uh, thank you for uh, for all uh, you have done uh, for your family. Um, and if it was uh, in any other countries, uh, like people were acknowledged uh, for saying that these are like the founding fathers of any country. And then we've been hearing uh, from me for the past 23 years about our meeting to Sawada every September 1st and every year. Uh, but we have never, I have never heard, I don't know if I missed it or not. No, never heard of, about his family and then his grandchildren. And the thing we have to do is, is acknowledge not only his sacrifice, not only his fight, his leadership, but also his his family and his including his, his grandchildren. Um, so uh, people are saying, I am saying that thank you for speaking up for using uh, your platform. Uh, uh, thank you for just uh, your services. We uh, uh, so to say, we acknowledge you, we love you, and hopefully uh, we will see in the future that we can work together uh, for our country. We can we can become friends. We are already brothers and sisters by the name of Eritrea and Eritreans. Um, so I just uh, want to acknowledge that. So thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mira? Right, thank you everyone for joining us today. A uh, special thank you for Rowan, Hamid, and, and Aisha. I think when I first saw your names, um, Rowan Awate and Hamid Awate and Aisha Awate, I got very excited. Um, but when speaking to you, I think um, I realized um, truly uh, you must be the grandchildren of Awate. Uh, you speak with so much grace and, 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 and elegance. Uh, and I'm very honored to have um, had this chance to, to meet with you and speak with you, um, especially in the context of, of Eritrea and getting your, getting your opinions and reflections um, is very valuable to me. Um, so thank you for joining us and thank you for coming up um, to speak today. Um, the more you read about uh, Eritrea's history and um, how the, the revolution started, and the, the courage and bravery especially, uh, that was taken, especially by um, the, the father of the, the, the Sora or the revolution. Um, um, it's, it's, very brave. it's very incredible to, to, to realize the, the courage and bravery that uh, they, must have, they must have had to show. Um, but yes, so thank you for, for coming up and speaking with us today. I would love to, to have more discussions with you guys and everyone in the audience. Thank you for listening and thank you for joining us today, as well as everyone on Facebook um, that's been with us today. So Jazakallah khair and uh, thank you for coming. Yes, did you send it to me? Sorry. Sorry guys, technical issue. One second, it will play shortly. Uh, sorry, Ismail, could you send me the link again? It's not so going to work. So sorry.
soon we've been live for over two hours now. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will now be ending the room. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you uh, again, uh, Rowan, uh, Aisha, and Hamid for being with us tonight. And um, we hope that the next uh, September celebration we will have it uh, hopefully in Asmara, uh, face to face, inshallah. Um, thank you again. Um, and thank you, everyone, for uh, being with us. This evening, uh, we will now end the room uh, on Clubhouse and also on the live stream for those of you who are following us on Facebook. Uh, have a great evening and happy uh, the September 1st for everyone, for all Eritreans and for Freedom Fighters. Thank you. <laughs>